What's going on? This is OXDF, and I'm looking at Advent of Code Day 5. Um, I'm traveling, I'm pretty jet-lagged right now, and uh, I just solved Part 1 uh, pretty quickly, actually. I didn't get stuck at all. Um, and then uh, I was pretty stuck in Part 2 when I realized I never hit record. Um, so um, I'm going to try to you know, recreate that a little bit. Obviously, um, well, I, I didn't get too stuck, so it should, maybe it should probably be just as quick. Um, also, I am traveling. I don't have my microphone with me right now, so I apologize in advance for the poor audio quality. I'm um, doing the best I can. Um, let me know in the comments if it's worth, if, if it's terrible, or if I should just, you know, it's worth it even if it kind of sucks sometimes. Um, so uh, let's look at the challenge, dive in. Um, I'm gonna, my, my input is going to be a series of um, lines. Each line has two points on it, so like 0959-8008. Um, those are going to represent x, y coordinates in a graph. Um, and so what they show here is for part one, I'm only considering horizontal and vertical lines. So where either X is the same or Y is the same. So like this top one would count, but the second line here would not because X and Y will change. Um, and I'm going to draw all those lines on the graph and count the number of lines that go through each space. Um, they show a dot instead of a zero. Uh, I don't need to make that output, so it doesn't matter. And then just count the number of spaces that have more than one in this case, it's five. One, two here, and then three, four, five right here. Um, so you can see I've already solved this, but um, this is actually pretty simple. I'll start with a, a normal shell here where I'm reading into all the lines. I'm reading in the in input that's passed in to a series of uh, an array called lines. Um, now I'm going to loop over lines, so four line in lines. Uh, and I will get point, uh, let's see. I don't, I don't remember how I did this, so this will be good. Um, P1 comma P2 equals line dot split. And if we come down to Vim 05 example, um, so I'm going to do a split on this. So that'll give me this point and this point. That'll look good. Then I can say X1 comma X2 equals. You know, actually, it might be easier. I'm going to take different. I didn't try this, but it might help me in part two, actually. Um, so what I did originally was I would say x1 comma x x2 equals I'll do it this way um, p1 dot split that's y1 p1 dot split comma and then I want to take each of those and make them an int so I can do map int comma that um, and I can do x2, y2 equals p2 dot split. Making a lot of assumptions about my input being good here, but you can generally count on that. Um, what I don't know is if I if I need a int, if I need a list outside this map or not. Let's let's run that and see what happens actually. Python minus i day five oh five example. What is like x2 eight x five nine okay um so i don't need I, the map works fine without the list there um cool. i think that's because i'm only using it once i'm just saving off these values and i'm being done with them um so okay so i've got max one what i alternatively could do is um just make this is how, that, that's how i solved this part originally um but instead of, i'm going to change it a little bit here i'm just going to call this p1 and I'm going to call this P2. I realize it's reusing those variables from above, but I don't need them anymore. I'm just going to overwrite them. And so now they're going to have, it's going to have this tuple, I believe. But it's worth checking. Let's see. Um, P1, map object, not what I want. Um, make it a tuple. I could do a list as well. For this use case, it's basically the same, I think. If that works, P1, P2. Okay. Um, so now I can say for part one, all I care about is if it's a horizontal or vertical line. So I'll say if P1 sub zero equals P2 sub zero or P1 sub one equals P2 sub one. That's how. So 
either X or Y staying the same tells me it's one of the ones I care about. Um, now I can just do a loop over, um, let's loop over the X values. So we'll loop over, uh, <laughs> let's see, this is the tricky part and you have to think about. Um, and I thought about this last time and um, we'll, do, we'll do it again here. Um, I don't know, I'd be very happy to just do a range over X from X1 to X2, but I don't know if X1 is always, which is bigger. Um, that makes any sense. But what I can know, because the first, if I can do a, um, I can sort them. Um, so I can do sorted uh, P1, P2, and then I'll, that will give me, um, that'll put the X, the low X value first. Um, let's, let's just, let's test that hypothesis. Also, I don't know if, test that, let's see what happens. Sorted expected one argument got two. Make that a list. So, um, open up that. Let's open up a new window here. Um, then 05 example. So, going from 09 to 59, that's fine. Let's see, where's another one? Um, the next one is 34. So, I'm going from 34 to 94. So, that's that looks good. I want, so basically what I'm trying to do is put my low X always here. Um, and then my low Y will also be here because if, if the X's are the same. Um, so that looks like I'm doing exactly what it's giving me exactly what I want. That's good. Um, so what did I do? Uh, what so what, what I can say here is um, P1, P, P2 equals so I'm just going to rename it. So now I know P1 is always the lower X or the lower Y if the X's are the same. Um, and so now I can loop over this and say uh, for I in range P1 comma 0 comma P2 comma 0 plus 1. I'm going to step over my X's. And um, this is where, I, you know, so I, I know in this case, my Y's are also just going to loop over the same. But actually what I can do, this is where I can use a slope. Um, let's come up here and say slope equals P1 of 1 minus Two so one divided by p p one one minus p two zero. This this is a classic mathematical slope, right? Change in x over change in y over change in x. Um. So once I know a slope, I can say I'm stepping one at a time in x. So now I'm going to also let's take that same step in one. Um, so I should make some sort of y uh, j equal e one sub one. So I'm gonna get the first y. Now I will do Okay, I'm rambling. I'm, I got to organize thoughts here, so I'm gonna do something called. I'm gonna do put a grid here, and I'm gonna save off my values. And I could just use a dict. Um, and the reason I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna actually use a default dict. But the only difference here would be if I define this as a dictionary. What I'm gonna do is come down here. I want what I want to be able to say is like grid sub i comma j plus equals one. I want to add one. So I want to, I'm going to, when I get, I'm going to, my line's going to go through this point. I want to find that point in my dictionary, add one to it. If, if this point's not in my dictionary, that's going to throw an error um, right now. But if I come up here and make this a default dict, and by default, I'm saying it's going to be integers. So now, if, and the, by default, integer is zero. So now, if it doesn't exist, it's just going to assume it's already zero, and then that this line will work fine. Um, then I will do j plus equals slope. So that should actually, let's see. So what I'm going to do here, ooh, I'm going to get some bugs in this code when the, 
I'm gonna get some bugs in this code when the uh, when the line is vertical. And we divide by zero. Um, all right, I got too cute and tried to do it all at once. Let's come back here and do this. Um, this is gonna be useful for part two. But let's come. So uh, delete this, delete that, delete that. So if, oops, don't delete that. If those are the same, if those are equal, this is our horizontal or vertical line. Um, then what I'm just going to do is go get my low x, but this time I'm just going to run over this, and I'm going to run for i in range uh, p1 sub zero comma p2 sub not sub zero sub one. I'm just going to run over my x's and over my y's, but because I know they're equal, I'm basically doing basically doing one or the other. Um, and then I can do home. I don't need. I think that's all I need. Let's let's say that again. Uh, I'm getting my two points, and then assuming that they are either a horizontal or vertical line, I'm going to sort it so that I get my low ones in P1. Then I'm going to loop over both x and y. Although knowing that one of these is going to just have one value in it, and so it's basically not a loop. Um, and for each time, I, each spot on the grid, I'm just going to count how many are there. Um, so I said it this minute ago. I don't actually remember exactly how to do this though. Um, run that. See grid. Um, what I want to do is get count of how many have a value of two or more. Um, so I can do a loop, uh, a list of rate of list comprehension here. So x for x in grid. If I do that. X is going to be just the um, keys, which is this right here. Um, that's that's not what I need. I need the values. I actually like to do items. You can do items here, and it will return. Um, so in this in that case, it will be um, not just keys, but I can do like uh, this would be like chord and num. I can do chord there, and then I can go over here. So like if I do that. Items. Try that. Yep. And I'm just printing the coordinate, but I am getting the number there too. So I can say um, you know, if num is greater than one. So there's my five coordinates where the number is greater than one. It matches up with what we saw in the input. Um, so I can do something like part print that part one. Oh, okay. So this is going to be len of Now I'm not actually using chord here because I'm dropping it into len, so I could, instead of doing items, do values, and then it would just return the numbers. Um, that'd be good enough for the solution, but if you ever if you ever need both, items is useful. So let's see if that worked. Part one of five, let's also try the input, make sure we're still good. 60, uh, 6397, uh, 6397, so we got it, okay. We're going to go to part two, and we're going to say now we are considering diagonal lines, and this is where I started to get stuck. Um, and you can see kind of where I was starting to drive on part one. Um, now it is telling me they're always going to be forty-five degrees, so I don't have to I don't have to worry about what happens if um, the slope is not. It's either going to be negative one or one, but um, we can still play with that. Um, so what we want to do here, up here. Um, Let's leave grid intact for tracking part one. Create a new grid for part two. Um, we're gonna, this is all gonna be the same. Now if this, this, these case, this case is still good, so we'll just do the exact same thing here. Grid two, i comma j plus equals one. But for the diagonal, we have to handle, for part two, we're gonna handle this as well. Um, let's move this up. We want to do this either way. Now is where we need to deal with the slope. Um, so we can do for i in range. I'll even type it out. Let's go up here and yank it. Oops. Yank it. Paste. For i in range that. And we, we know we've got the p's how we want them. Um, we do need us. This is where we want to slope. Um, so we do p2 of there's the y minus p2, p1, the y value, over p2 sub x 
P2 sub, uh, P1 sub N. So that's going to give me a nice slope. So now I can do my steps over Ys, and I can just, um, I can even just keep, like, so J is going to equal P1. That's my first Y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, grid 2 sub I comma J plus equals 1. And then I will say J plus equals slope. So now when I do the next step, when I take one step forward in X, I will take that same step forward or backwards in J. Get my new J. Um, this is well beyond where I got stuck before, so I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but let's give it a try. Um, place for this part two is going to look very similar, except we're going to use grid two. I believe otherwise it's the same. Okay. Well, I don't remember if that's right or not. Let's check. Um, so the example, that is the example, that is what we got in 12. Let's see. One, two, three, three, five. Oh, that worked. Um, let me just make sure that was clear. Um, what I'm doing here is in part one, I handle the case where I've got a horizontal or vertical line. That's great. So I'm going to, I left grid two here. It does the same thing. In part two, I'm handling, okay, now I've got, it says I know I'm going to have slopes of one or negative one, 45 degrees. This would actually work, it wouldn't work well on like fractional um, ones, but as long as it moved, um, you know, like if the slope was three, or if the slope is a whole number, um, this would work fine. If it's not a whole number, it's not going to, it's going to fall apart because I'm going to start getting fractional stuff and it's not going to fit my grid well. But um, my idea here is I calculate the slope. So I know that what, you know, for every X I move forward, what, how does Y change? And that, that's the definition of slope. And then I start with a, I start with my y being p, you know, the first y, and I loop over all the x's. And as each time x steps forward by one, j changes by the slope. And so, well, i is actually moving over the x's, so j change, you know, j changes by the slope. And I'm just recording the counts there, and uh, that gives me what I got. So, um, hopefully, <laughs> sorry, this is not my, my most polished video, but. Uh, Hopefully it was useful and you learned something, and I will talk to you again next time.